Hi guys! Welcome back. I hope everyone is doing dandy today. It is finally not hot out. It is finally a lot cooler. So I'm here in my room and we're going to be doing a fun sewing tutorial today. I know you guys have been watching me thrift a lot of fabric lately and specifically I've been saying I've been wanting to create a two piece for <laughs> ever and buying a whole bunch of fabric to make said two-piece, but I have not yet done that until today. I have some thrifted fabric here, so we're gonna use this gingham fabric that I thrifted. I also have a collared shirt that I'm gonna be using, or a button shirt, button up shirt that I'm gonna be using to make the pattern today. And I have some shorts that we're gonna use to create the shorts. That's all I had to say. So let's get into the tutorial on how to sew this and let's have fun. Even though sometimes sewing is not fun, it's very frustrating. So we're gonna start with the shirt first and I'm just gonna lay out my fabric here on my desk. Usually I cut it on the floor, but today I'm feeling classy and I'm gonna cut it on my, my table today. Hi guys. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain this as best I can because I'm not professional and I'm just winging life as most people are. So. For this shirt, I just took my shirt and I took the front panel of it and I laid it down and I tried to trace it as best I can. I kind of put dots at each corner and then kind of, you know, put them all together and connected the dots to make the pattern. And I did that the same for the back, except the back, it had like a top and a bottom, which I don't think you need a top and the bottom, you know, top piece, bottom piece for the back, but I did it just because I felt fancy. Oh yeah, and then for the back, I cut it on the fold, so I only traced half of it and then it kind of mirrors, you can see here, I ended up having to cut, you know, a back out twice because I had a liner, but technically you don't really need a liner, you know, I'm just trying to be fancy, but you just need one piece. And then for the, you know, sleeves, I almost forgot the name of it for some reason. I don't know why I would forget the name of a sleeve, but um, yeah, for the sleeve, I did the same thing where I kind of just put dots and then kind of trace them together where I kind of flipped it over like I just showed you and then I connected it and then it just became this like really oddly shaped piece of fabric kind of like this so if your sleeve kind of looks like this you should be good to go okay and then for the front collar piece which I don't know I feel like it's kind of hard to describe but you know when you have a button-up shirt you see the collar pieces like you need a liner so I'm just creating that liner here where I took the front panel of the shirt and then I just traced half of it you can see I'm just like roughly doing it and hi Benson I'm just roughly tracing it like you can already tell this is gonna be a terrible tutorial because I really don't know what I'm doing I'm just kind of winging it and spoiler alert it actually turns out pretty decent but if you're wanting to make the matching shorts, it's actually really easy. You just need any pair of shorts. I'm just using a pair of sweat shorts. And you need to trace the booty part. So you just need to do one quarter of the leg slash one butt cheek. And you trace that onto your, you know, your fabric, like once again. And then you gotta flip it over to get the front thigh, like, you know, like half a crotch on the front. And then once you have those two traced out, you're pretty much good to go. Except you need a waistband, but we can talk about that later. Oh, wait, 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 yeah, actually, you do need pockets. So if you are going to put pockets in, just take, you know, a pocket like this and cut around it. Get something similar to this and it'll work. Actually, there's one more thing. We got to cut out a collar. So what I'm doing is I just had the shirt folded in half and I just popped the collar up. And then I'm kind of just tracing this, um, we're not tracing, I'm just cutting around it. I got lazy and you're just trying to get a shape like um, this shape that I have on the screen right now and you need two of them. So the dress shirt I took my pattern from had a top back piece and a lower back piece like this. So I'm just gonna sew them both together on my serger, but your dress shirt that you, or your button up shirt or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, might not have it, so you could probably skip this step. But once you have one back piece, you can go ahead and sew the sides together. So I'm just putting the two front pieces on there, clipping them together, and then just sewing it on my serger. One of these days, I actually need to invest in an actual standing ironing board and an iron that didn't cost me $5 from Walmart. But for now, I'm okay with my setup, honestly. Oh, but if you haven't noticed, I'm just ironing down all the seams just so it's nice and flat. 
Like I mentioned before, my back piece has two pieces. It has a top and a bottom. And now you can see this ugly seam now that it's sewn together. So to cover that up, I actually have a liner piece here that I'm just gonna sew um, on top. So we cover that piece. So I'm not really sure if this would be like a style piece, having two pieces on the back. Honestly, I think it's kind of useless, but I already cut it out, so I kind of have to go with it now. So what I did was I sewed along the edges when I put the right sides together, and then I trimmed the corners so when I folded it right side out, it didn't have any bulge, and then also did some slits so it wasn't all bunched up on the top of the neck there. And then this is what it looks like when I folded it right side out. I needed to iron everything down, and then I ironed the seam upwards and then tucked in the liner piece inwards so you couldn't see the raw edge, ironed it down flat, and then I went to my sewing machine, did a top stitch on it, and then that is how I finished my two pieces on the back. So I ended up getting a little too excited and I ended up sewing the top here so it's like a nice clean edge, which I shouldn't have done just yet because I need to sew it to the front. Like it needs to attach at the top of the shoulder here. So got my handy dandy seam ripper and we're gonna be doing some that doesn't go in the back. We're gonna be doing some seam ripping. I'm sorry, this is a terrible tutorial already. <laughs> Can we even call this a tutorial actually? I don't know. So now that the seam is open up here on the top, I am going to sew the right sides together of the front part to the back part to create the shoulder. I'll, sh I'll show you in one second. So I have it pinned now here. You can see I just pinned the front to the back, but I did not include the liner here. So I'm pretty much doing the same steps as I just did for the back where I'm sewing the front and the back together, or was I doing that for the back? I don't know, same thing, where I'm not sewing the liner until the very end, and then I ironed up the seam, and then I'm taking the liner, folding it inwards over top, and then doing a top stitch to keep that down, and that's how I got it to look pretty. I just realized there's a lot of gingham pattern in this room right now. Like, I'm wearing a shirt, I have my gingham dress here, and then I'm also making a gingham two-piece. I swear, this is like almost all the gingham I own and it's all right here right now. Here is the fit of the shirt so far. I think it fits great, so I don't have to do any alterations. It also folds really nicely here, like the bottom of the collar, so I'm happy about that. No alterations so far, so I can move on to um, um, the front part here. We're gonna work on that next. Before I move on to the actual liner, we need to iron some interfacing on it because there's gonna be buttons, there's gonna be buttonholes, so we need a little bit extra stability to the front of the top. So right here, I just have some cotton interfacing, but polyester interfacing will work too. And I just have a really light one, you know? Okay, but that that's it, so we can, we can go back to my ironing board now. And to be honest, a lot of the stuff I've learned is at the fabric store. So talk to the ladies and gentlemen at the fabric store. They're really smart. They know their stuff. So for the interfacing, I just put the front two liner pieces on top, cut around it, and made sure they were both right sides facing up because we're gonna be ironing it onto the wrong side. And then after I cut that out, I just iron them on. I'm sorry, I forgot. I just pinned this without showing you guys. But what I did was I took these two liners that I just or <laughs> ironed the interfacing on and I just pinned it to the front of the top here and I put the right sides together. Don't forget to put the right sides together. And now that I have it pinned, I'm just gonna sew from here all the way down to the bottom. Dang, that looks good. It actually does look pretty good. So to make it look even better, I just need to do a top stitch along the whole side, all the way down, not the bottom, but just the whole side, and then that will keep it nice and sturdy and flat. So I have all the top stitching done on the shirt now. It's all finished on the inside here. So now we can finally move on to the collar. So for the collar, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna put the right sides together. And then we wanna sew along the edges, but not along the, the bottom. So. Follow my nose, here, just the sides and the top. That is where we're gonna sew now. See, my face looks really dewy right now, but um, it's sweat, it's really just sweat. 
So now I'm just sewing along the sides, you know, where I just showed you with my nose. Yeah, we're just sewing along the sides, so not the bottom there. And then I'm just trimming the excess fabric on the side, trimming the corners, and then I'm flipping it right side out. Next, I am trying to find the center of the top of the shirt. That's why I folded it in half like that. I pinned it and then I found the center of the collar, pinned those together, and then I started making my way outwards to the front of the shirt and then that's how I pinned the collar on and I'm only pinning the inside of the collar because we're gonna be doing another, you know, the magic where we're gonna put the other side on, you know. Okay, well, I'll show you later. But now it's time for the straight stitch of one part of the collar to the shirt. And I just did that along the whole bottom. And then after we're taking to the iron and we're ironing up that seam. And then we're taking the other side of the collar. We're going to be folding it like we did with, you know, everything else in the shirt. And then we are going to be ironing it down so we don't see the raw edge. And then we'll do a straight stitch. And that's how we do the collar. JK actually we have one more step I'm doing a top stitch along the whole outside of the collar just because I want it to be nice and pretty and to match the rest of it but I guess this is optional but highly recommended I gotta admit it looks pretty good this top so far like I am pretty impressed with my collar I need to move on to the sleeves now because I want it to have sleeves and I don't want it to be sleeveless like this top so sleeves are pretty easy. I just have like this big odd shape here. And when you have your big oddly shaped sleeve like this, all you do is you just put the right sides together. Okay. Pin this side together. Then once it looks like this, you just sew from here to here. Look how obnoxious my serger is. But I do have to admit, she is a beast. Like, I don't know what I would do without her. And I even got her a Facebook Marketplace for like really cheap too, so bonus. So now that we have them looking like, um, you know, um, sleeves now, we can pin it on to our shirt. It's a little tricky pinning them on, but nah, it's not, eh, it's not that tricky actually. When you're pinning the sleeves on, you wanna put right sides together as always. You always want to put right sides together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold her right side out and I'm going to fold this shirt inside out and then I'm going to tuck the sleeve in here. So now right sides are together. Next, I'm going to line up the bottom seams right here, pin them or clip them, and then I'm going to take the end and I'm going to stretch it to fit the other side and then I will pin that like that and then I will just pin in between. And now I'm just sewing the sleeve on to the shirt. That's really all I'm doing. I don't really have any other information to share other than I'm just sewing it to the shirt. We're on to the final step now. We are just gonna be hemming it. So I have a pin on the shoulder here where I want to you know, hem it for the sleeve. And then I think I'm gonna leave the length for the length of the top. So. All we have to do now is go onto the iron, iron over our seam, and then sew it. And then <laughs> we're almost done the top, other than the buttons. But I'm gonna do that later because that's all hand sewing. Come over here. We're gonna iron on the floor. Uh, I'm getting tired of talking, but pretty much I just trimmed off a bit of the sleeve so there is one inch left. So I had enough for, you know, the edge of the bottom of the shirt so I can, you know, finish it nicely. And I just folded it over twice. You fold it over like a quarter inch and then you fold it over once more. And then that's how you get a clean edge. And then I also did the same thing for the bottom of the shirt. And then I sewed it. Yeah, just sew it along the top and there we go. Bob's your uncle. So this top is pretty much good to go other than the, the button right here, which I am gonna procrastinate it to the very end because my sewing machine doesn't sew buttonholes. And I really don't feel like hand sewing right now, so we're just gonna jump over to the shorts, which are super easy to make. I probably could make them in about half hour, 45 minutes and that's all I had to say. They're just really easy to make. Okay, it's finally time for the shorts now. So I'm taking one front piece and putting it together with one back piece, right sides together, and just clipping them at the inner seam and we're gonna be sewing a straight stitch there. 
Then you're gonna put the front side and the front side together, the back side and the back side together, and then you're gonna pin all along the top there, and you're just gonna sew along there, either with your sewing machine or serger. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little flip magic trick where you're kind of flipping it so it looks like this. For some reason, I am just really struggling with the placement of these pockets. Usually I can just understand it and it just like, you know, comes naturally to me of like where everything goes and how seams go together. But right now, I think it's because it's getting late and I'm getting tired. <laughs> Why can't I understand this? I'm like... So I ended up not being able to figure it out on my own. So I watched a YouTube video. I learned it. So I'll explain best I can for how I did it. So I took each pocket flap. I sewed it to the front, the back, so each flap, I guess. And then I did a top stitch with my sewing machine. Then I put the right sides together of my pockets and just the shorts in general. And then you can see I'm just pinning all around the pockets and we're gonna sew the side of the pants and the pockets all at once. And that's how you do it. So you just go all around the pocket and then down the leg. We now have shorts that are looking like shorts. <laughs> so now that we have them right side out like this, I am gonna do a straight stitch on the pocket on the side here. So the pockets don't look like this on the side of them. You know, your hips. That That's, that's not pretty. So we want it to look like this. We want it to be a nice pocket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pocket and I'm gonna flip it to the front of the pants. And then once you have the pocket at the front of the pants here, you're just gonna do a straight stitch at the top here, just about a half inch out on the top and the bottom of the pocket, just so it stays at the front like this. So now we're gonna move on to the waistband here and I just cut a waistband that would fit around my hips. So what I did was I measured my hips and then I added about two to three inches on there because you wanna be able to pull them over your your butt when you put the shorts on. So if you just put your waist, um, you won't be able to get them on. So make sure you measure your waistband to make it go over your hips. <laughs> Can you tell I'm tired? So now that we have this waistband here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fold it in half with the wrong sides together so it looks nice and tidy on the outside here. And then once it looks like this, we're gonna pin the raw edge to the top of the pants. This is what it should look like, but you should have pins on it. I'm gonna pin it now, but I just wanted to show you that you wanna have the pants facing right side out and then you can put the waistband on it like this with the raw sides going upwards. Bam bam turkey and ham! We're ready to sew the waistband now. Also, when you're sewing the waistband, make sure you leave a two inch gap at the back, which I will show you after I'm done sewing this because we're gonna put the elastic band in after. So I have my shorts on here and I think they're gonna sit about at my belly button, so like at my true waist here. So now I'm gonna take my elastic here I'm going to measure out how tight I want it. Don't want it too tight, but I also don't want it too loose. That seems good, so I'm gonna trim it here. And now I'm gonna thread this through these pants right here. So to thread this elastic through the waistband, you are gonna need a big safety pin like this, and you're just gonna take it, put it through the end of the elastic like this, and then you're gonna put it through the hole here where we didn't sew the waistband to the bottom of the shorts and we're just gonna feed it through here. Did it! So now that the elastic's in here, you can see the two ends are out like this, which they should be, they both should be out on each side. And now I'm just gonna take them together and I'm gonna overlap them like this and I'm just gonna do a little um, sewing to keep them together. Are you guys ready? This is my absolute favorite part. And the elastic is gone in the waistband here. And look, we have shorts. But um, before we can finish off the bottom of the shorts, we have to finish off this waistband because we got a hole here. We gotta fix this hole. So I'm just gonna sew, um, you know, waistband shorts together to finish the hole. These are perfect. They fit perfect. Look at these. Aren't they cute? Now we can finish them off. They're good to go. I'm like very happy with them so i am just gonna hand them off the same way we hand off the you know the bottom here sleeve here so um i'll be right back so we're finally on to the very last step which is putting a button and a buttonhole on this this 
beautiful blouse right here. To be honest, I have never hand sewn a buttonhole before. Obviously I've hand sewn buttons, but never a buttonhole, which I've always done on a machine. So this will be quite interesting. This will be quite interesting. I have to look it up in my books, how to sew um, a buttonhole. Stay tuned. I will show you the progress of me um, trying to sew a buttonhole. And hopefully you guys have a machine that sews buttonholes so you don't have to um, hand sew one. Okay, so I'm finally done. I have it on. I just like to have a little bit of suspense at the end of my videos, so this is why I like to, you know, not be in the frame when I talk, but um, I'm gonna show you guys how it turned out. Isn't it so cute? I'm so happy with it. Like, it can be a piece I wore out for the day, and it also can be a piece I wear to bed. So technically, I could wear this 24 seven, and I think it'd be okay. Like, I think it'd be presentable to go to bed, obviously, in this, and then I think it'd be presentable to go out to the grocery store in this. But other than it being just super functional for all day wear, I am very, very happy with how it turned out. Here it is. It only took me eight hours to do, but it was an eight hours well spent. Okay, I am like, I'm like starving now, so I'm gonna go, probably go eat a burrito. Not really sure, but I hope you guys enjoyed sewing with me today hanging out with me. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Also, if you guys do make this two piece, be sure to tag me on Instagram, at Jenna Phipps, so I can see what you guys are creating. <laughs> but that's actually it now. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.